If you're looking for a Chromebook, then the Asus Flip C101 could be the very Chromebook just for you. Hello there, my name's Gary Sims, and this is Gary Explains. Today, I want to look at the Asus Flip C101 and see how well it performs as a Chromebook and how generally it can be compared to laptops in general, Windows laptops and to Mac laptops. So if you wanna find out more about this Asus Chromebook, please let me explain. Okay, so I'm halfway through making a series of videos about the Chromebooks and Chrome OS. The video, The Power of Chrome OS, has already been uh, published. I'm also doing one on how you can run Android apps on Chrome OS, and also on one how you can run Linux apps on Chrome OS. But today I want to look at this Chromebook that I've been using to make all these videos, the Asus Flip C101. So the reason why it's called the Flip is because you can do this with the screen. If I manage to open it up here, you can bend it round and round and round, and actually it goes all the way around and kind of gives you that idea of a tablet. Not, It's not detachable, but it does allow you to put this into different formats and the different factors, which makes it very convenient for use. So there are three main ways you might want to use it. One is as a laptop, where you just kind of be sitting here kind of working at it. The other would be in kind of the A tent shape where you can leave it on the table and then you can watch media on it. And the third, of course, would be with it completely closed over so you kind of get a laptop approach. Now, interestingly, if you're wondering, when you put it in this mode and the keyboard is flipped over, the keyboard is no longer red. You can tap here as much as you like and nothing can happen. The mouse pad as well, you can tap here as much as you like, nothing changes. It just relies on the screen. And if you are using it, a little virtual keyboard will pop up so that you're able to type while you're in this mode. So if we look at the specifications for a moment, this is not an Intel powered Chromebook, this is an ARM powered Chromebook, and it has a processor from Rockchip called the OP1, and that's got two Cortex-A72 cores and four Cortex-A73 cores, so it's a hexa-core setup. It comes with four gigabytes of RAM and then the option of either 16 gigabytes of internal storage or 32 gigabytes. Now, all models also come with an SD card slot, so you can stick an SD card in there that allows you to expand the storage and it always appears as a kind of an extra drive. It doesn't extend the internal storage. It is a second drive that appears there on the list of the different storage devices. As for the display, it's a 10.1 inch display with a 1280 by 800. So that's just a bit bigger than a 720p HD. A couple of other interesting things worth mentioning. Here on the side, it's got a USB Type 2, normal USB port, but it's also got two USB uh, 3 ports with a Type C connector on it. One is used for power and one is for use for connecting other things, including an external monitor if you wanted to. There's also dual speakers here at the bottom. So there's actually two speakers and it is slightly raised off the ground by the rubber feet. So when it's flat on the desk, you can hear the sound coming up. Now, obviously that's different to, let's say, if the speakers were some somewhere here on the front, like on some laptops, but actually the sound isn't bad considering the size of this device. And then of course, there's all the other things you'd expect. It's got a webcam built into the front of the screen. It's got Wi-Fi, it's got Bluetooth, and of course it's running Chrome OS. It includes a 38 watt hour battery, which according to my testing will give you eight hours of video playback over Wi-Fi, or six hours of 3D gaming if you're using an Android app that you've downloaded from the Play Store. It's also worth mentioning that like other Chromebooks, along the top, you don't get the function keys, F1, F2, and so on. There are a special set of keys that have specific functions under Chrome OS. For example, going back a page or forward a page in the web browser, controlling the volume and controlling the brightness. Now, I actually found these very useful and very intuitive to use. You don't actually need function keys with Chrome. For example, on Windows, you might use a function key to refresh a page. Well, actually here, there is a dedicated refresh page button. And they're fairly intuitive to use, so you're not gonna have any problems if you've not used Chrome OS before. They're very obvious about what they actually achieve. In terms of performance, I was quite pleased with how well this Chromebook performed. I managed to rustle up a few laptops from around the house, including a Lenovo uh, Yoga Book and a Microsoft Surface Pro, and I compared them using Jetstream, which is a JavaScript uh, benchmarking tool. And the reason I chose that is because, of course, being a Chromebook, most of the stuff you're gonna be doing will be actually on the web. So how well it runs content from the web, of course, is absolutely paramount. And so the Yoga Book has a 1.4 gigahertz Atom processor, it's a quad core X5Z8550, and using Jetstream, it scored around 40, 39.8. Now in comparison, this uh, Asus Flip 
C101, which have got the uh, OP1 from Rockchip in it, managed a score of 49.8, almost 50. So a significant boost in performance there. But obviously Intel do make much more powerful chips. And if you look at the Surface Pro, for example, running the dual core M3 6Y30, then that actually managed a score of 79.1, almost a score of 80, which in itself is twice the speed of what you find in the Yoga Book, also an Intel chip. So it really does depend on what laptop you are buying and what performance you can expect from it. So what this does show you is that these ARM chips are not at the bottom of the pile. They're not kind of just going to be completely useless. This is going to give you reasonable uh, performance. Obviously, it's not the same as if you were buying some ultra thin $2,000, $3,000 laptop, either on Windows or in the Mac world. This is a much, much cheaper device, but it will get the work done, especially for productivity and especially for running Android apps. So overall, I've been really impressed with the Asus Flip C101. There are two complaints, both of which are to do with uh, the model that I've bought. One, of course, is it's got a 10.1 inch screen, which means that the form factor is quite small and the keyboard is relatively small. So if you do a lot of touch typing and you're into typing things out very quickly, then you may find this keyboard a bit small. If you're kind of just a you know a one or a two finger typer and you just want to take this with you uh, as a productivity tool, it's going to be absolutely fine. But do be aware that it is a slightly smaller keyboard. And the other thing I'd like to say is that if you are going to be using Android apps, and you are planning on using Linux on it, then you really should get the 32 gigabyte version because the 16 gigabyte version, once you start installing those apps, once you start installing the part for Linux, then actually that uh, internal storage can get eaten quite quickly and you're not left with that much space. Now, of course, the idea is that all of this stuff, all your documents is meant to be in the cloud, but once you start using Android and Linux, then a lot more stuff actually ends up being stored here on the internal storage. So do get the 32 gigabyte version if you you are planning to do things like that. So the value proposition here, of course, is that it's a good battery life, that it's lightweight, and that it is running Chrome OS. And you need to understand the benefits of running Chrome OS by looking at that other video that I have published. Okay, my name is Gary Sims, and this is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video about the uh, Asus Flip C101. You know what I'm gonna ask, please subscribe, please share this video, and please give it a thumbs up, but only if you liked it. Okay, that's about it. I'll see you in my next video.